how did Ron Hunt survive being impaled by a drill through his skull? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on broken bones and orthopedic injuries that's easy to understand for the everyday human. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. And before we get started, if you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon and things I do day to day, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees. I'll leave a link in the description down below. So today we're talking about an unusual injury. We're going to talk about a man who was impaled through his skull with an 18 inch drill bit. So who is Ron Hunt and how did he get injured anyway? Ron Hunt is a construction worker who was injured on August 15th of 2003. He suffered a sudden workplace injury while working on a construction site in Reno, Nevada that led to him earning the nickname The Miracle Man. He suffered a head injury that required immediate emergency treatment in the hospital, but one which left him with only minimal lasting effects. As I said before, Ron is a construction worker. And on this particular day, he was working with a drill that was fitted with a bit that was 18 inches long and one and a half inches in diameter. And to make things interesting, Ron was using this chip auger drill bit while he was standing atop a six foot tall ladder. While working with the drill bit, the ladder began to wobble and move. And suddenly it began to walk away from the wall. As Ron began to fall towards the ground, he threw away the drill as a safety measure. And apparently, this is what construction workers are instructed to do if they are falling from a height while holding a drill. They are told to throw the drill away from themselves so that they do not become um, injured by the drill or the drill bit when they fall to the ground. Unfortunately for Ron, he fell towards the ground head first. And although he did throw the drill away from himself as he began to fall. The drill kind of bounced and landed in such a way that the drill bit was sticking up straight in the air. And when Ron fell to the ground, he unfortunately fell directly on top of the drill bit that he threw away from himself while falling. As Ron fell onto the drill bit, the point pierced his right eye, entered into his skull behind the right eye, and then exited his skull above the right ear. Unbelievably, Ron did not lose consciousness when this happened. Ron was immediately airlifted from the construction site and transferred to the Washoe Medical Center in Reno, Nevada. And believe it or not, while being transferred, Ron remained alert and even light hearted during this whole ordeal. He was able to talk, hold a conversation, and even tell jokes on his way to the hospital. So after arriving in the emergency department, the attending physicians performed a physical examination and an imaging assessment. Apart from the obvious foreign object protruding from his skull, Ron did not appear to have any significant deformities. Also, he was noted to have a normal Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS score. He appeared to be neurologically intact and was able to move all four extremities upon command. The initial radiographic assessment would include x-rays of his skull and of his cervical spine. Further information would be obtained from a CT scan of the skull as well. The CT scan allows us to characterize injuries to the bony skull with better precision than does an x-ray. Also, in this particular case, because of the proximity or closeness of brain tissue to the area of injury, he was also investigated with MRI scans, or in other words, magnetic resonance imaging. And the MRI is a non-radiographic tool which allows us to characterize soft tissue injuries with great precision and accuracy. The combined imaging demonstrated that the drill bit had penetrated the skull in the right orbit and then exited the skull above the right ear. Fortunately for Ron, the drill bit had pushed the brain and its surrounding tissue to the side of the drill rather than becoming impaled on the drill as it passed through his skull. Consequently, the path that the drill bit followed spared Ron extensive damage that might have occurred otherwise. 
After his examination, Ron was treated with tetanus toxoid to prevent tetanus or lockjaw. And this is simply the condition that is caused by the bacterium Clostridium tetani. This is an infection and a condition that can occur commonly after lacerations or open fractures. In addition, he was given intravenous antibiotics to decrease the likelihood of infection. This is especially important for a number of reasons. First, Ron suffered a laceration that was caused by a non-sterile foreign body. Obviously, a non-sterile construction drill bit is a great potential source for bacteria. Second, the foreign body caused not one, but two open fractures of the skull. This is a great opportunity for the exposed bone to become infected, causing a condition called osteomyelitis, or an infection of the bone. And finally, number three, the non-sterile foreign body also caused a soft tissue injury to the brain and the surrounding tissue. Now, obviously, the brain is the computer which controls everything else in your body, and it's usually a pretty bad thing if you allow the brain or the computer to become infected. Consequently, it was of paramount importance that Ron receive immediate treatment with antibiotics to prevent these infections. After this initial treatment, Ron was taken to the OR to have the drill bit removed. Now, there are probably a number of techniques that could have been used to remove the drill bit from his skull. However, in this case, because the drill bit was inside the skull, but outside of the brain and had not entrapped brain tissue within its blade, the drill bit was simply reversed out of the skull. After the removal of the drill bit, obviously Ron was left with a hole in the right orbit and another hole in the back of his skull. At this point, he underwent an irrigation and debris mont in order to cleanse the wound and to remove any foreign bodies or necrotic tissues. And this just basically means that the surgeons cleaned the entrance and the exit wounds and they removed any dirt or contaminants from those areas. And in addition, they removed any necrotic or damaged tissue from those areas. Unfortunately for Ron, this would also include the removal of his right eye. At the time that Ron was imaged, the imaging revealed fractures of his orbital and the back of his skull. The presence of these fractures was confirmed at the time of his initial surgery. However, as a result of the increased opportunity for infection because of the foreign body, these fractures were not initially fixed on his first visit to the operating room. Ron remained in hospital for several days after his first surgery, receiving continuous treatment with intravenous antibiotics. During this time, his physicians monitored his wounds for signs of infection. They also monitored infection markers within his blood with serial blood tests to ensure that there was no evidence of infection elsewhere in his body. After several days of close observation, when there was no evidence of further tissue necrosis or death, and when there were no further bacterial collections or drainage noted, he was taken back to the operating room for the second stage of his repair. At the second sitting in the OR, he had an open reduction and internal fixation of the fractures around his orbit and an open reduction and internal fixation of the fracture at the back of his skull performed. In both cases, both plates and screws were used to close the fractures. Ron remained in hospital for some time following his second stage repair. During this time, the intravenous antibiotics were continued and once again, he was monitored for any signs of deterioration or for the progression of any signs of infection. Once his physicians were happy that his condition was stable, he was discharged from the hospital. So what were the results after all of this in the end? Ron did lose his right eye and he suffered nerve injury to the facial nerve on the right hand side of his face. This left Ron with blindness on the right side and partial paralysis of his right facial muscles. However, fortunately for Ron, he did not suffer any other lasting effects from this gruesome injury. And other than a wonky smile and a glass eye, Ron was expected to have a totally normal existence from that point forward. Believe it or not, Ron Hunt actually 
actually did survive being impaled in the skull with an 18 inch long, one and a half inch diameter drill bit with relatively minor effects. So there you have it. Today we've been talking about Joe Hunt and how he survived this gruesome injury. I hope that you found this video both educational and entertaining. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.